Hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. I'm 34 today and my hip hurts. Recently I was in a conversation with a friend of mine because we were going through our prom photos. 14 year olds today just go straight into knowing how to apply makeup in the correct and most flattering way. Which is completely unfair. They should have to suffer through cream eyeshadows. First of all, blushes that don't have anything to do with their skin tone. Super cheap foundation that makes them break out. I'm sorry, but it's just, it's only fair. So I thought today um, I would do something that nobody asked for, which is to show you how we used to do our makeup circa 2000 to 2004, because I'm an expert on that. We didn't have stuff like, like this, like we didn't have all these amazing colors to choose from. That wasn't a thing. We sure as hell couldn't afford MAC palettes. But I'm gonna do my best to recreate from what I have. We didn't use all that much. Things like eyebrow pencil or contour, no. Some of us may have had bronzer, but none of us knew how to actually use it. Ah! So let's get started. Normally, in my 2000-2004 makeup routine, um, I would begin with my tub of Cetaphil moisturizer. So I did moisturize, thank goodness. I don't have that anymore. It did last me a good 12 years, um, but I did not buy that because now what I actually require as a mature woman, yeah, that's the Olay Regenerist because there are just cracks in this foundation. I'm gonna start with moisturizer because that's super important and I need to fill in crow's feet. Cool, get it up into my receding hairline. Don't want any wrinkles from the sun. Oh, actually, I don't go out in the sun, so that's not really a problem. Um, definitely get it down the neck. I actually saw an infomercial with Cindy Crawford where she said not to, not to neglect your decolletage. Oh, I think that's like lower. So, um, okay. I think it's like neck and like chest-ish. So like wherever you would put Vicks Vapor Rub. I no longer hate myself because I'm in my 30s and I've done a lot of um, self-care and self-reflection and a lot of therapy. So I don't own any cheap foundation anymore. I actually use this Studio Fix. I am NW13. Here's the thing with this is um, we didn't have things like this. Like this. This did not exist. And in fact, yeah, there were like the little um, triangles, like makeup sponges. Um, but I never used them. I just would go like this. It's been a really long time since I've worn foundation because quarantine. So this um, pump is probably clogged for good reason. Okay, so it would just be, um, this is the expert application. It would be like this and then Yep, and then blend. Super strategic. I did remember to blend it along my chin line. That was something that I did do, which was a good thing. And probably the only good thing that I did in this makeup routine. I'm gonna see if I can adjust the light a little bit better. This is worse, right? This is much worse? Yeah, this is much worse. You can tell that I'm a professional makeup artist because I have the correct lighting and everything, right? Don't judge what's behind me. Um, that's the laundry. It takes, you know, one day to wash, about three days to sit, and then another day to rewash, and then um, it goes in the dryer. And then after that, it sits in the laundry basket for um, seven to 12 business days before folding, so. Okay, I got it a little bit higher. I think maybe this is a little bit better um, for you to see what I'm about to do to my face. Brows, all you have to do, take your tweezers and just anything you see, anything you see, 
goes. That's it. Just, you don't need eyebrows. What, so people can understand your expression? No, come on. Come on, you're a girl. They're just gonna assume that you're being hysterical anyways, so. These are thin and sparse enough that uh, I'll at least be in the norm among everyone else in 2000 to 2004. This is a Maybelline palette that I still have. Um, I have clearly worn through many of the colors, uh, but as you can see, it is definitely a cool tone. Um, you've got a super dark, in fact, do they have names? Because I love when they have names. Well, this is actually called Twilight Rays. This is Expert Wear Eyeshadow, and it says safe for sensitive eyes. Everything about me is sensitive, so this is, this is a safe place. So what we have here is a um, super dark blue, and then we have a light blue, like a Cinderella blue. Then we have just this pink that has been completely untouched because I did not mess around uh, with anything that was dainty. And then we have like a light lilac, and then we have like a light lavender. Um, that also was barely touched. What I often did was I used this. We're gonna go with the dark blue because why not? A lot, actually. I would go, kind of go ham. I would kind of go a little bit crazy. I would take this and then I would just kind of go in lid only. Anything that went above the lid was immediately removed with uh, a Q-tip. That space just didn't exist. Which is, you know, kind of correct for me because my eyes are so super small that I just don't have any real space to do anything else with it. I'm like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood was my dad. Clearly an American standard poodle was my mom. That's how I got this hair. If you can't see it from four miles away, you need more. Roll your eyeball around under your finger in its socket. If you don't open your eye and see slight sparkles, then you're not tapping hard enough. So I would go in with the light blue next. Uh, same finger. Takes a while. There is a fine layer of dust because this palette is 426 years old. So that should be enough. And then you're gonna go right in the middle. So now we have to reapply. You also can't do it without opening your mouth. Why? I don't know. Science. Great. That looks... That looks frightening. Now, typically, I would use a white. Everything... I forgot to explain this. Everything in 2000's makeup was frosted. Here is my other Maybelline palette. Clearly loved. Clearly. What's funny about this is this is the warm tone palette. It wasn't until after 2004 that I started wearing warm tones. Yellow, sallow undertone like I do. And when you don't go out in the sun because it's 147 degrees, what's really important is that you wear warm tones. And I wasn't having that. That was just not my aesthetic. Here's that white, see that? See that white? Yes, yes. So frosty, so sparkly. Clearly you can see where I've worn a hole with my finger. Just gonna have to keep digging. Okay, that should be enough. And now you go on the, boom. Does it make sense? No. But it's what we did. This makeup only lasted through like, maybe the morning bus ride. Um, next we're gonna go to blush. It's important to make sure that it does not suit you, that you did not pick it out, and that it actually just came in a little zip-up bag with your mom's Clinique order, and that this was 100% just the cute little free samples. Is that appropriate for my skin tone? Absolutely not. <laughs> this is the only brush that we ever used. Um, we didn't use eyeshadow brushes. Those weren't like this entire, none of this existed, none of it. All the hairs are just falling out, by the way. 10 out of 10, okay. Because I wouldn't actually smile, I would just smirk smile. I need to get it right there on the apples on the cheeks. Yep, so you, that's, you got that, you caught it right. It's circle, 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 swipe. 
I didn't have YouTube to teach me how to do this, okay? I just had to A, watch my mom, who did most of her makeup in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> And B, um, I guess I had Seventeen Magazine at the dentist's office, but that's about it. It really just was a look that made me look like a who from Whoville. There's just, it's not enough for me, honestly. Like, if you can't tell I'm wearing it, then what was the point? So this is a, a crayon. This is Intense Ivy. So it's actually like an olivey green color, and you guessed it, it came in a Clinique sample pack from my grandma after I went and picked up her foundation for her. Bonus feature footage, um, if you look at my prom picture, don't try to find my date because I didn't have one. Don't I have a crappy eyeliner that I would have used while I was listening to Avril Lavigne on my floor and crying? Oh, the stories from back then. Um, I had a good Charlotte poster. And my mom freaked out because they all had tattoos. I should have told her then, like most of them were stick-ons. Uh, this is yet another Clinique. Clinique, you're just over here serving us things that we didn't ask for. Um, this is a Clinique Intense Ebony Crayon Eyeliner. Yes, okay. So in reality, this would actually be uh, a CoverGirl because um, that's mostly what I wore. If it was available in the drugstore, I was wearing it. We didn't have wings. We didn't do any like pointed tips or anything like that. The goal was to look ill. So um, this is legit how I would do it. I would start, I'm gonna go cross-eyed when I do this because that's just my anatomy and the things that happen to my body when I try to see. Here we go. We are more metal than that. I just knew that if a Backstreet Boy could only see me, he would fall in love with me take me away. We're gonna go in with Wet n Wild, so. I'm not gonna do these lash fiber extensions because um, I don't want eye cancer, so. We're not gonna curl our lashes. We're not gonna do any kind of prep at all. Um, we're just gonna do a nice spidery tarantula type of look. Always see you end up with that every time. Did you catch that? I have washed my hands because we're in a pandemic, so don't worry. Done. Another Clinique. A Clinique mascara. What even is this color? It says it's black. I don't know if I believe it. Oh, I found it. No, I, f I found it. I found it. This is a Wet n Wild shimmery pink lipstick. You want it to make your teeth look as yellow as possible. Um, this one is called Dark pink frost. <laughs> heavy hand though, make sure it's a heavy hand. This is the clamshell that was the staple. The mirror has fallen out from being jangled around in my backpack for so long. And you don't do it strategically or you don't try to blend it in, you just... All of this was on purpose. That was the everyday look. Uh, let me show you how to transition that daily look into a formal look. So you're gonna go in with your silver. Um, now normally I would have a much more complex uh, collection of glitter than this. Let's just really give you like the sparkle shine. It looks more like a, I'm gonna s tell you a scary story, sorry. A handful of bobby pins. You're just gonna take your thumb, grab a section, pull it up, and you're just gonna twist. Okay. Now start rolling it kind of into a bun. So it should look something like that. You're gonna stab yourself in the head like 40 times. You don't have to like make it even or like, you know, make the fine part lines or anything like that. Just start twisting. All right, so it looks something like that. Then you're gonna go to the back of your head and pull up that section of hair. And again, you're gonna pin it. This muscle memory that's involved in me doing this is like blowing my mind right now. Twist that up. Beauty is pain. Twist. And then for me, um, because I have a man's shaped face, I like to pull some of that out, give myself some little flyaways on purpose. Do you love it? I 
legit wore my hair like this to prom. I am loving how this is just collecting in the wrinkles of my skin. This is the pinnacle of fashion for the early 2000s. You're welcome. Um, my friend Stephanie came over for prom and I helped her get ready and uh, I actually used, her dress was purple and so I used all of the purple colors on her as well and then I did her hair like, like so. Yeah, so that's it. Um, thanks for joining me here on my 34th birthday. Uh, thanks for going down memory lane with me. Happy prom.